We can manipulate the flow of electrons to our advantage using our knowledge of electromagnetism and DC circuits. When we study circuits, there's a bunch of different symbols you need to be familiar with. Here they all are. In a circuit, we have electricity flowing through wires and through any of the components, light bulbs, ammeters, voltmeters, and so on, that we connect. Lots of students find it hard to imagine how electricity is going to behave when it's in a circuit. Here's how to make it easier. Simply think of the wires as pipes and the electricity as water. In a series circuit, there's only a single path for the electricity to flow through, just like if the water only had one path of pipes to flow around. The opposite of a series circuit is a parallel circuit. In every series circuit, there's only one possible path for the flow of electricity to take, while in every parallel circuit, there'll be several paths. So since the electricity can flow down both of these paths at once, both of these light bulbs will be illuminated at once. But couldn't we have stuck two light bulbs into a series circuit as well? And if we did that, wouldn't they both have been lit up just like in parallel? Well, the answer to this question is yes. Two light bulbs can be connected in series just fine. And they're on and everything's going great. For now. But wait, look what happens if something goes wrong in the circuit. And if the bulb on the left winds up getting busted. Now neither of the bulbs will be illuminated, even though there's nothing wrong with the one on the right. Since the circuit is series, there's only one path for the electricity to take. This is like a blockage occurring in our pipes. All of the electricity inside the circuit is going to stop and not flow through the circuit. We can avoid this problem by connecting the two bulbs together in parallel. That means each one of them is on a different branch of the circuit, like this. Now some of the electricity is going to flow around the circuit through the bottom bulb and some of it is going to take the shortcut through the upper bulb. The thing that makes this arrangement so much better than the series equivalent is because of what happens if catastrophe strikes and one of the bulbs gets busted. See, all is not lost after all. It's pretty damn exciting. The reason that one of the lights will remain on is that even when a blockage occurs in the wires, or the pipes, the electricity or the water still has one complete circuit to flow through. Now that we're moving on to the ideas of current and voltage, it's especially important for you to pay attention to the idea that electricity and wires is like water and pipes. Imagine that in a circuit there's only a certain number of electrons flowing. Just like in pipes, there's only a certain amount of water. The amount of the water flowing is going to be called the current of our water. In circuits, we use the word current when we want to talk about how much electricity is flowing past a certain point. Current is measured in amps or amperes, and the symbol is I for some reason. You introduced a charge in an earlier video. Charges linked to current with I equals Q divided by T. Where Q is the amount of charge, measured in coulombs, and t is the time in seconds. You can see that the current is the rate of charge flow, or the amount of charge flowing past a point per second. Let's look at the simple series circuit with a battery and two identical light bulbs. The battery switched on, which means that the electricity is flowing around through both of the light bulbs. So far, so good. Now remember that batteries do not create electricity, just like, say, a pressure pump does not create water in our pipes. There is always the same amount of electricity flowing through the circuit. The next question we want to answer is this. What's the current going to be through each of our two bulbs? And what does that tell us about the total current? We can measure current by sticking a device called an ammeter in any circuit anywhere we like. Here's what it might look like. And this is what it might tell us. At point A1, the measure is 2 amps. And remember, this means the rate of charge flow is 2 coulombs flowing past per second. At A2 it's 2 amps, and at A3 it's 2 amps. That means the current flowing at the battery is exactly the same as the current flowing past the first bulb, and also the same as the current flowing past the second bulb. How is this happening? Well, remember that there's a set amount of electricity in the circuit, and that in the series circuit there's only one way for it to go. Then this should make perfect sense to you. There is absolutely no reason that the amount of electricity at any of these places should be any different. Current is a measure of the amount of charge flowing past a point per second, which is like the speed of the water in the pipes, the same everywhere. So current lesson one, in a series circuit, the current is the same everywhere. Now let's turn to a simple parallel circuit. Once again, we've got two bulbs. So once the current starts flowing from the battery, it has two different paths it can take. Since the bulbs are completely identical, we're gonna say that approximately Half of the charge flows around the outside loop, 
and half takes the shortcut through the upper bulb. If we stick in three ammeters like last time, we'd end up seeing this. And if we took a peek at the ammeters, we'd see this. The first ammeter would show two amps at the battery, but the other two ammeters, A2 and A3, both show one amp at each of the light bulbs. So what's all this then? Well, just like in our series circuit, we've got a battery with a current through it of two amps. So the current appears to be split when it gets to each of the branches. This should make sense to you, because half of the charge will flow around the edge loop and half will flow through the inner loop. The current will be half of 2A through each light bulb. So that's current lesson two. In a parallel circuit, the current in each of the branches adds to the total current. The opposite, well, in a way, as you shall soon see, of the current in a circuit is the voltage in that circuit. Back when we explained current, we asked you to think of it in terms of the amount of water that was flowing through the pipes in, say, a plumbing system. Hopefully that was of some use to you. Well, a voltage works differently to current. A helpful way to visualize voltage is to think of it like this. Electricity is the flow of electrons. The entire point of a battery, like we said, is not to create electricity or electrons. Instead, it merely gives them a kick around the circuit. Imagine that the electrons are like runners in a marathon. As they pass through the battery, they're each given a little pack of energy. That energy is what gives them the energy to make it around the circuit one more time. Great. Now when an electron has been given its package of energy, it's going to head to the nearest light bulb or some other component. Now it gets to the light bulb, and it's going to give some of its energy to that light bulb, like a gift. Now not only does this energy power the individual electrons, but it powers the light bulb too. So each time an electron comes across a bulb, it offers the bulb its packet of energy. The bulb is greedy and it takes it and glows for a little while. Then it takes energy from the next electron and so on until the battery has no more packets of energy to give out. The point we're trying to make is that a voltage is like the amount of energy that each electron gives out. This comes from the equation V equals delta E divided by Q, the change in energy per coulomb. Here's our regular series circuit again, with those two light bulbs are glowing. We measure voltage with voltmeters. Because our goal is to look at the difference in energy of the electron before and after it passes through the bulb, we need to connect voltmeters in parallel around the light. This does not make the circuit into a parallel circuit, however. And here's what each of the three voltmeters is going to say. V1 will show two volts. V2 shows one volt, as does V3. Well, that's rather odd, isn't it? Back when we looked at current, we saw how the current was the same at every point in the circuit. Now, though, it seems like voltage in the two bulbs is going to add up to the voltage of the battery. Could this possibly be right? Well, the brief answer is yes. Imagine that the electrons have all made it around the track one more time, and they arrive at the battery tent, cold and tired. The battery gives them their packet one more time, which contains two pieces of energy. The electrons know that, because there are two bulbs, they need to save a piece of energy for the second one. So they get to the bulb at V2, give one piece, and so the difference in energy for each electron becomes one volt at that bulb. Then they make it to the second bulb and do the same, give up their second piece of energy. Okay, so that's voltage lesson one. In a series circuit, the voltage around each component adds to the overall voltage of the battery. Now we turn to a parallel circuit. Great, you can probably see what's going to be coming for us in our wee electrons and their antics. V1 shows 2 volts, V2 shows 2 volts, and V3 shows 2 volts. Remember that the electrons have their route planned out. Half of them already decided to go through the inner bulb, and half of them go through the outer one. Because they each only have one bulb to go through, they are free to give that bulb their entire 2 energy packet. That means each bulb now gets twice the energy it did compared to in the series situation. For this reason, these two bulbs will glow twice as brightly as the two in the series circuit. So that's voltage lesson two. In a parallel circuit, the voltage through each of the branches is the same as the total voltage. Let's talk about water and pipes some more, because that seems to be working out pretty well. There is a final quality of circuits that we need to discuss, and that is resistance. Resistance is measured in ohms, and the symbol is this wacky thing, omega. The resistance of a circuit is basically something that refers to how hard it is for the electricity to flow through the current. If we're going to talk about water, then the resistance of the circuit can be thought of as the width of the pipes. Narrower pipes essentially restrict the flow of water, and so they mean that the circuit's going to have a higher resistance. 
Now, we can make the resistance of a circuit higher or lower by sticking things into the circuit called resistors. A resistor is simply an object that heats up when electricity flows through it. You can think of resistors like special pipes we add in that are narrower than the regular pipes. So if we add those pipes directly into the circuit in series, the water gets funneled through them and it slows down. The more resistors we add in the series, the higher the overall resistance becomes. So we can simply add the resistance of each resistor in order to calculate the overall resistance. That should have mostly made sense to you. Unfortunately, when we add in resistors in parallel, something completely different and unexpected happens. The overall resistance of the circuit goes down. How can this happen? Well, imagine that we've added in three extra resistors in parallel to a simple series circuit. Basically, by adding these resistors in parallel, we've opened up some more channels for the electricity to flow through. Instead of restricting the flow of all electrons through a single resistor, a smaller number of electrons can now flow through each path. This is basically like sticking a bunch of narrower pipes into a plumbing system, but sticking them in parallel. Even though the extra pipes, the resistors, are narrower than the regular pipes, because the water has more channels to flow through, the overall flow of water is less restricted. The equation shows how adding in resistors in parallel lowers resistance. There's a special equation called Ohm's Law, which we use to form a relationship between the three things we've so far discussed with you. Current, voltage, and resistance. Ohm's Law looks like this. Voltage equals current times resistance. A better way to look like this is that it can be arranged as current equals voltage over resistance. Now we can explain how the current, the flow of electricity, gets affected by resistance. If we increase the overall R of the circuit, the quantity on the right side of the equation will decrease, and so the overall current, I, on the left side, will also decrease. Let's use Ohm's law. Let's look at this simple-ish circuit. Our job is now to find the total resistance through each of the branches of the circuit. This can be somewhat tricky, because we've got two parallel branches of resistors, but each one has several resistors in series. We'll begin with the inner branch. The total resistance of this branch can be found by adding up the resistors. So total resistance equals 1 plus 3 plus 2 equals 6 ohms. Now the same thing for the outer branch. 2 plus 3 equals 5 ohms. Now to find the total resistance of the circuit, we must look at the parallel formula for resistance, which means adding the inverses. 1 over the total equals 1 over 6 plus 1 over 5, which is equal to 11 over 30. So the total resistance will be 30 divided by 11, which is 2.73 ohms. The next thing we could do is find the overall current through the circuit. Because it's a parallel circuit, the current will be different through each branch. The current through the battery, though, can simply be found using Ohm's law. Current equals voltage over resistance, which is 12 over 2.73, which is 4.4 amps. The final thing we're going to force you through is the idea of power. Power means basically the same thing in circuits and electricity as it did in mechanics, if you've covered that already. Power is how fast we gain energy. In circuits, the electrons are giving their little packets of energy to the components. So the power of that particular component, a bulb, let's say, is going to look at how fast each electron can drop off the energy before it heads off. Power, P, equals delta E divided by T, the change in energy over time, or how fast energy is transferred. Also, power is going to involve both voltage, the energy, and current, how many electrons are giving off their packets. This formula is P equals IV, where P is the power of a component measured in watts after James Watt, the Scottish engineer who figured this all out. Here's an interesting equation. What will the power of each of the light bulbs be in the following series circuit? Well, the ammeter tells us that the current at one point is going to be 3 amps. Because this is a series circuit, we can also say that the current is going to be 3 amps everywhere. We've been told that the voltage across the battery is 6 volts. If the bulbs are identical, then they will each take three of these overall six volts. Therefore, in each bulb, we get power equals current times voltage, which is equal to three times three, which is nine watts. Remember, components in a circuit can be connected in either series or parallel. In a series circuit, the current is the same everywhere. In a parallel circuit, the voltage through each of the branches is the same as the total voltage. Voltage is a measure of the difference in electric potential energy between two points. 
we think of it like the push an electron receives. Ohm's law describes the electrical resistance of components, or how hard it is for electrons to flow in a circuit. Power is the measure of energy over time, described in watts, or joules per second.